there's the leader, Bill Elliott, in car number nine. This is not exactly a mega buck team, but it's a well-organized, strong family unit, and family units over the years have always seemed to work well in racing. But behind the big stories of those major and super names you hear at stock car racing, there's another 80% of the field that don't live quite the same way. Among the Grand National drivers, three champions whose names are known to every fan come up at every single race and are known. But there are others whose goals are the very same, but whose luck is not. Racing is big names, big business. Buddy Baker's made over two and a half million dollars. Bobby Allison and his 81 wins some five million dollars. And Richard Petty, he's won over five and a half million dollars in posted awards. But there are others. Driving a race car is my way of making a living. J.D. McDuffie. My way of putting the bread on the table at home. He started 574 races, has made a million dollars. I'm getting back about half as much as I'm giving. He's never won a race and has hardly a nickel to his name. And I couldn't make it without a good woman at home. Yeah, I have to cut a lot of corners, buy used parts, and run used tires, and knowing how to build the engines and everything myself, that's... That's a big saver right there, because I could never buy a $15,000 or $20,000 engine. I'd be out of business in about two races, you know. It looks to me like a $150,000 shop. You told me you built it for fifty. Oh, yeah, a lot of my friends come by at carpenters and everything, farmers, and we finished it up, you know, really saved me a bunch of money. Sponsorship, tough world. And the kind of people who've been with you before, uh, Weiler nuts and bolts and rumple furniture and so forth. They really helped me out a bunch to, to keep going. If it weren't for them little sponsors along, I, I would have been out before, you know. But not enough to be up front running, but it gets me to keep track. It's got to be more than a dream, cause the dreams just won't make it. Dreaming won't ever put bread on the table at home. And racing runs deep in my veins, and I'll never shake it. And I'm tied to it just like I'm tied to the warm on at home. I worry about him. I don't worry about the car. <laughs> I mean, the car comes second. He's not a quitter. Jay's not. I would have quit a long time ago, probably. <laughs> I would. The last three years, I've been running on borrowed money, you know, and you just can't do that. And I'm getting slipping a little farther back, but maybe I'll have some help this year where I can show up, you know. Uh, but it is really tough. You can see somebody come in one time, nobody knows him, where he came from or what he's been driving. And before the race is over or before it started, he's got all this fantastic money just because maybe he knows one person or... Uh, I don't really know how it, how it works, but yeah. I've always felt John, he was left out. He never got a fair shake, because he's got the experience, and he can drive. To run with the best in the world, you know, I could probably go out here and run somewhere else and run right up front, you know, but you ain't got the caliber of competition there, you know. If I can make the top ten in this, I've, I've really done something. I've told him to quit this year. I begged him to quit. Really? I mean, how can you keep going with zero, you know? But then you look at him. He can't stand that. He's got to keep going. I understand his side of it. I love to do it. It's the only thing I've ever done, really, besides being a mechanic, you know, and it's all I know. You might as well call me a 20th century drifter. a new sponsor, a new car, a new chance, perhaps a final chance. But here at Daytona, the old hard scrabble luck plucked his pocket one more time. The engine blew, he failed to qualify. 
So for J.D. McDuffie, it's leave the crowds, the glory, the big money. Hitch up and haul up old I-95 to try again next Sunday at Richmond, Virginia. One of the stories of the weekend is the story, sadly, of J.D. McDuffie. An independent who's been racing for a quarter of a century, his best finish was in this very race. That finish was only a seventh. He's run some 631 events and never tasted victory, set on the pole once. Earlier, we talked to J.D. McDuffie at the hospital today about his injuries. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. I still got that much pain in my hands, and my hands uh, got second and third degree burns on it in my leg, but uh, I'm going to be all right here in a week or two, but uh, it's, it's, it's burnt pretty bad, my hands are, but I was lucky to get out of it. The love of the sport, you know, that's, that's all I've ever done is race, and uh, that's all I know. And uh, I, I still love to do it, uh, and I'll be back. This game ain't going to get me down. It's not going to get him down, but it's got him in the hospital with burns over 15% of his body. They actually found the steering wheel burned. It had melted in the car. And it all happened just on Thursday in the qualifying race. A tough break for J.D. All right, gentlemen, Alan Kulwicki just got tires, and there's trouble in the back stretch. It is, oh, J.D. McDuffie. Whoa. And the field will split him in the middle of that straightaway. King did a great job there. When I say King, I mean Richard Petty. I, I, I have to remind myself on those television to have little things that I call people. That well, well, Richard come very close to turning him. Just there. Even Kyle, when he's talking about it, calls him King. So the King did this. Lake Speed ran out of gas just moments ago under green, coasted in, and the hood is up on the Kale Yarborough car. The, the Lake Speed ran out of gas just moments ago under green, coasted in, and the hood is up on the Kale Yarborough car. The Phillips Trop Art in Pontiac. He had gone 105 laps without a stop, and you see the crews ready for pit stops. Third caution of the day at lap 271 for J.D. McDuffie's spin in the back stretch. Kenny Schrader's crew. And here's J.D.'s Pontiac. Wow. That was really a tough break for J.D. See, see he's got that's tr he's got this spots of rumple furniture he's had for a long time, but they always put rumple on the part of the car that doesn't get rumple. <laughs> then again, Dale Jarrett. 275 laps complete. We're working the third caution of the day for J.D. McDuffie's crash that's knocked the rumple furniture Pontiac out of the race here at Dover Down. Mark Martin continues to be the race leader. Let's have another look at what happened to J.D. Oh, he got together with a 42 car. The 42 car uh, was trying to go by him on the inside. J.D. must have was going to leave room for him on the outside, and uh, they got together. I'm sure really tough break for J.D., and I'm, Kenny Wallace, I'm sure, uh, had no intentions of that happening. He just, uh, Kenny was going low, and J.D. thought he was going high, and they had a little meeting there. Well, that's after they've already tagged there. He had a ton on the inside wall there you know what that's like when when you anticipate somebody going by on the outside or the inside it's just like when you meet somebody in the hall and both of you try to get out of each other's way and you keep moving over in front of each other that's the deal there driven by jd mcduffie jd i know you didn't want to be here right now what happened out there i don't know i got bumped coming off two over there and i got into the inside wall and banged it up pretty bad it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get her back today. No, uh, it's been to her in the house and all. Yeah, that's too bad. When, when, what's your next show? I know running as an independent, a little tough on you to make these shows. If something like this happens, when's your next race? I couldn't make out what you were saying. When's your next race? Uh, we, we're going to Pocono. All right, life is tough on an independent driver, really, when, especially so when you have something like this happen. J.D. McDuffie will be back at Pocono. I hope there's somebody listening, watching up in Pennsylvania today, They'd like to sponsor that car, get J.D. along and call Pocono Raceway, and they'd be happy to happy to set you up. You know, that that's one thing about J.D. Did you notice he had a grin on his face, even though that come out of his pocket? That wasn't factory money or, or money from a sponsor or anything else. That's J.D. McDuffie paying for the damage, and he didn't get out and say, this guy not anywhere or anything to seen somebody may have bumped well, you know that you gotta admire a guy like that the last weekend at watkins glen during the running of the budweiser at the glen we lost a very close friend a very tenacious competitor in the winston cup series as many of you know by now jd mcduffie lost his life in that crash last week benny parsons takes a closer look at this great man 
Racing fans knew J.D. as a classic underdog, or in racing terms, an independent. And they loved him for that. Because in many ways, he was a symbol of the struggles that many of us face in life. For J.D., his joy came in working on a race car that he was proud of, and then driving it to its limit. He operated on a budget less than a tenth the size of others, but he kept plugging away. And someone asked why, why did he keep racing? He knew he really didn't have a chance to win, but I'm here to tell you, when the command was given to start the engines at Watkins Glen last Sunday, J.D. was sitting there thinking about how he could win that race. As hard to believe as it may sound, every real racer thinks that today will be his day, that somehow, some way, things might fall their way and they'll be the first to take the checkered flag. J.D. McDuffie was a real racer. When he was interviewed in Victory Lane following his win in a celebrity race at Shangri-La Speedway the night before his final race, what was on his mind? Yeah, we had a real good time, too. Uh, I hope I can repeat this tomorrow. But it's times like these we realize all successes in life aren't measured by wins and losses, but rather the quality of the pursuit of a dream. For racing fans, J.D. McDuffie will always be remembered as a symbol of the days when racing was simple and men competed for the love of the sport. Trouble, big trouble here in turn five. Oh, a car is upside down. Caught behind the ignition line. So and one of them did. Try to reach for the ceiling. Uh, did get upside down. This thing where very, I belong. I believe that's J.D. McGuffey who is uh, on his roof. And one of the drivers is coming out of the car right now. That's Jimmy Meeks. And well now he's going to see. He can assist J.D. McGuffey in getting out of his car. McGuffey's car is on its roof, and Jimmy Means is calling. Nah, nah. There's McDuffie. There's a wheel. We're in the what I wheel thought was gone. Plows in the wall, and evidently he has. And Jimmy Means goes into the wall while Means is in the air. Along. Thank the Lord that he went in there while J.D. was up in the air. It appeared as if that wheel had come off the car uh, before he left the racetrack and went on to the grassy area there. Uh, major damage to the wall, as you can see, and of course our major concern is the condition of J.D. McDuffie. The other car involved is Jimmy Means, and he is already out of his car. The ambulance on the scene now assisting J.D. has been stopped. We've had a serious crash over in turn number five, and here is a replay of what happened. J.D. McDuffie and Jimmy Means involved. This is McDuffie, the wheel already off the car, sliding off the track into the grass. Makes hard contact with that entire barrier. Goodness, Jimmy Means is out here walking around. A little bit of a skin there on the chin. Everything else okay, Jimmy? Yeah, Ned, I don't know what happened. You know, I've been looking. Uh, Jay's been in my mirror the whole time. And, uh, you know, I was kind of watching. He's running really, really good. And I don't know where I cut down on him or he come in there. Uh, lost his brakes or what. But uh, next thing I know, he you know, hit me in the side. And uh, I hope he's all right. You know, he took a pretty bad leg here. So I'm fine, but uh, I don't know about Jay. Well, you went right under him, it looked like, when uh, when his car was up in the air. Yeah, I believe it did. You know, I just uh, I don't know what happened. It just seemed like, uh, uh, you know, if you lose your brakes going down that straight away, you nothing else to do. But uh, I don't know if that's what happened or not. Well, we appreciate you coming by and chatting with us, and uh, hope everything else is okay. Well, further information on the status of J.D. McDuffie, here is Chip Williams, the Director of Public Relations for NASCAR. And, Chip, uh, what's the information? Jerry and Bill, I, I regret to inform you that uh, J.D. McDuffie, has passed away. Uh, he's 53 years old. Uh, of course, our hearts right now is his wife, Ima Jean, and, and, and his uh, children, Jeff and Linda. And it's, it's really a pretty sad day right now. A terrible tragedy here at Watkins Glen. And of course, uh, Chip, in the interest of safety, whenever there is a tragedy like that, you're always trying to find out possibly the cause of death to try to prevent this from happening in the future. Is there any information now as to what may have happened? Well, right now, uh, we don't know about the cause of death because of uh, the autopsy is scheduled for in the morning. Uh, as far as what happened to the race car, it looks like a possibility of a wheel breaking loose. We're going to look into that. We're going to look at the race car and uh, see what we can find out from there. Of course, we're not going to be able to do that until after the race. 
a terrible tragedy here at Watkins Glen. And Chip Williams, thanks for coming out from NASCAR Control and giving us information. That was not what we wanted to hear, but unfortunately, that occurs in the sport of motorsports. Bob, it is always difficult to report the death of any race driver. They know the dangers and the hazards, and they choose to race because they love it so very much. J.D. McDuffie leaves his wife, Jean, and two children, Jeff and Linda. Our sincere condolences to all of the McDuffie family from all of us here at ESPN. I know exactly what you're going through, sweetheart. And you fans out there, you wonder how these guys can get in these cars and go back out and restart this race. Hey, it's their job. It's what they do. There's 100,000 people here this afternoon to watch them do that job. There's not a one of these drivers that wants to be in that race car right now. They want to be in the garage area, hugging their wife, their girlfriend, their mom, their crew members, whoever. I don't want to be here now. I want to be over there looking at Ned and looking at Bob and just not saying anything. But we've got a job to do. And that's report to you who wins, who loses, and what happens during the day. Gene, we all love you.